This is your 2020 Kia Soul EV, fresh off a win for the World Urban Car of the Year, issued by the World Car Awards. Congrats to you, Kia, on that. I've done a very detailed review on the Kia Soul combustion engine, so this walk around will be pretty quick. All the good stuff's on the inside. So everybody off the two trims for the Soul EV gets LED everything, headlights, turn signals, and fog lights. Big difference here, your charging port is up front, simply push, pops open. You get two charging options covered by plastic covers, so that keeps the dirt and the dust out. So very nice there, and it's right up front, so impossible to miss, and it blends in pretty nicely with the front end. Everyone gets 17-inch wheels, it's a cool design, you know, thick five spokes, uh, looks pretty good to me. LED turn singles in the side mirrors. Let's back up and give you a look at the profile. Looks exactly the same as the combustion engine EV, uh, sorry, combustion engine sole. Let's go around to the rear. The only difference here is the eco electric sign, which is right there. Let's open up the trunk, put your cargo figures there for you. Two shelves, one at the top, one at the bottom. And in here is your charging cable, nice little Kia logo on there, as well as your battery meter, which is also there. Top trim gets the uh, cargo cover. Um, I don't know why they wouldn't have just given it to both. Bit of an irk there for me. Anyway, let's close her up. Uh, that's gonna wrap the outside up. Let's take a look at the inside of the 2020 Kia Soul EV. But before we do that, I forgot about something. <laughs> Uh, this is pretty cool. It's a definite perk for me. So the word soul is etched into this top part here and It kind of follows the S this design line here as well. Let me get myself out of that shot That's the problem with black cars. You're in all the reflections So that little part right up there kind of mimics the S uh, as far as the same shape as soul All right back with an inside look 2020 Kia Soul EV Let's take a look inside the Soul EV, starting with the rear seat, and you can see there's lots of space back there for this class of vehicle. The hump in the middle is pretty small, and that's because the battery pack is underneath the floor. So Kia's really thought of a way to make this an everyday livable vehicle without a lot of compromises. Uh, cargo space, again, on the same train of making it livable. Seats go down nice and easy, just like the combustion engine Soul, and uh, cargo figures were up in the previous portion of the video. Uh, this is the top trim, so you get heated rear seats, uh, two stages, one, two, very nice there. Um, and it's, it's a, I can't get over how livable the vehicle is, and it's usually with an EV you get some kind of trade-off where, yeah, you get lots of range, but the interior is not quite compromised, but you lose a bunch of space. But Kia's just, you know, there's another good look at it. Kia's done such a good job of making this a very livable vehicle. Uh, let's open up, open up the front. The engine's on, so that's why the beep's coming. Here's a design perk for me, absolute huge perk. You can see the shape of the bottom part of the speaker there and the uh, top part of the cup holder storage cubby. And it looks like if you just push them together, they'd fit perfectly. So that's a real cool design touch by Kia. And this is a top trim. So you get the premium hardened carton audio system. You get the uh, interior mood lights. So very nicely done there. And again, I'm not gonna go too far in detail as far as uh, the seats because we know they're very comfortable based off my uh, combustion engine review. So let's just jump in because here's where a lot of the big differences are up on the dashboard. So here we are. Uh, if you haven't seen the EV Soul dash before, here it is. So your range is on the left. A uh, bunch of options in the middle, and I'll get to that in a sec, and your speed is on the right side. So everything's based off your steering wheel. So right now I'm gonna run down this uh, setting menu so you have your consumption, uh, accumulated info, and the drive info. So accumulated is like your ongoing uh, trip computer, and the uh, drive info is what you've done from the time you started the car to the time you stopped the car. So that's where that is, and you get all sorts of other information as well. I like this, the driving style. So basically uh, I've tried to be as good as I can to get as much range out of it. And the harder you press down to the button or on the button also known as the gas pedal, uh, the more uh, your aggressive numbers will go up uh, and you're really EV conscious, conscience, conscious, sorry, shouldn't have stumbled on that. Uh, your economical will go up as well. So it's a really cool touch there to let you know just how well you're doing uh, and the energy flow when the car is going. It goes from the battery to the wheels when you're coasting, slowing down, or using your regen braking paddle. Um, it's gonna show the wheels spinning, pushing the energy back to the battery. Top trim again, this one has the heads-up display. You can change the color of that uh, speedometer to uh, red, uh, no, sorry, orange, green, and white. So very nice there. If you don't like the heads-up display, just push this tiny little button that says HUD and 
it collapses into the dashboard. So really nice touch there, Kia, yeah, very well done. Ton of safety stuff, we'll get to that in the driving portion, but you do have your blind spot monitoring and lane keep assist, lane departure warning. Here are your paddle shifters. Uh, again, different part of the video, we'll show that more in detail, but that is your downshift, so to speak. Uh, so, uh, for example, let's just put the car into drive and I'll show you more of this in a minute. So there's your gear shifter, gonna shift it over, little red light under the D. And paddle shifters level three is what you see in the, actually right there, right where my finger is. And you're gonna tap this to go higher and you're gonna tap the other paddle shifter to go down. So level three, level two, level one, and nothing. And again, I'll get into more of that in the driving portion of the video. I'm gonna put it back in the park for a sec, show you the most important screen, which is your energy information screen. Uh, so, sorry, 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 the camera's on an angle there. So basically you're gonna to touch that and that's gonna give you all sorts of information, your range with the climate on or off, which will definitely affect the range. So the climate is on now. And interestingly, as a bit of a quirk, you only can go to 27 degrees instead of 32 or 28 as some other vehicles have it, right? So you drop down all the way to 17 instead of 16. So you only have like a 10 degree range. Not the worst thing, just kind of quirky. A uh, big perk here is the heating, heating or HVAC system is on, specifically the heat. You can set it to driver only and that saves some range for you because you're not heating that foot well or having stuff come out of that side. Uh, it's only up there and on the driver's side. So nice touch there, Kia. Everything else is the same. Nice combination of uh, hard touch buttons and dials. And there's some uh, other simple buttons up here in the 10.25 inch infotainment screen. Uh, heated seats are standard. Heated steering wheel is standard. On the top trim, you get your cooled seats, three stages, and same thing for your uh, for the driver. Uh, let's do drive modes real quick. So right now, uh, I just put it into sport mode, so it's really responsive and really quick, uh, quicker than usual. I'm gonna push it once again. That's gonna get me into eco. With a limit at 90 kilometers an hour, um, that really stresses the energy savings. I'm gonna hold down eco again, and that drops me into eco plus. And what that does, oops, let me get back to that. So hold it down. Uh, the use of some functions, functions such as Climate control, that went away too fast. Let me try that one more time and give you a better look at it. So basically your climate control uh, and speed is limited when using the power saving mode. Uh, I've lived in normal for most of uh, my time with the Soul EV and it's done me just fine. Uh, I've done one pedal driving with ease thanks to these uh, the, the regen paddle shifters. So very nicely done there. Uh, just back to the main screen. Sorry, I'm jumping around. I just don't wanna miss anything here for you. Uh, this gives you all sorts of information, your uh, charging information as well. Sorry, the phone keeps trying to play, pair to everybody else's Bluetooth. Um, so yeah, that's uh, all your information there. Let's touch the battery board again. And that gives you actual an actual real-time update uh, of your electricity use. So whether it's the drivetrain, the climate, electronics, your battery care, um, it's really cool how advanced and smart the Soul EV is as far as giving you all the information of what your vehicle is doing, how it's doing it, and what it's affecting. So let's go back to the home button. So right now I'm at 122 uh, kilometers of range. I'm gonna shut the HVAC system off and it goes right up to 124. So I'll show you that again. Uh, let's go, let's turn it here. Can we see both? Yeah, you can see 124 in the top right part of your screen. I'm gonna put it on, drops to 122, so you can see that in, in the middle. Let's drop it off again. You can see the 122 change to 124. So you put your heated seats on, your cooled seats on, your heated steering wheel on. Everything you do that requires electricity takes away from your range. And that's not a sole issue. It just It's the way EVs work. And that's just how it is. Uh, park in the middle. One to the left for, for reverse. A uh, little tap to the middle for neutral. And uh, one tap to the right for drive. And uh, your start stop button is right there. Everybody gets wireless charging. Well done, Kia. Thank you so much for that. A uh, little more power there and uh, another little piece of power option. There. Let's do the drive 2020 Kia Soul EV. So two trims. There is the premium trim, which is equivalent to a base model. And then there is a limited trim, which is equivalent to your top trim model. 
Big difference here, it's range and it's battery size. There's a bunch of other differences we'll, which we'll get to a little later on. So premium trim, again, which is the base trim, gets you 248 kilometers of range, sorry, up to 248 kilometers of range, 134 horsepower and 291 pound-feet of torque. You bump up to the limited trim, which is the top trim, and you get up to 383 kilometers of range, 201 horsepower, 291 pound-feet of torque. So there's a real big difference. Here's the catch though. The limited, sorry, the premium trim, which is your base, is priced accordingly so that in Ontario, you can get the $5,000 rebate because it's under $45,000. If you go to the limited trim, which is the top trim, you're over $45,000, actually over $50,000. So you do not get that. If it was me personally, I would pay the extra $9,000 which is the price difference, and I would get the limited trim because it's range for me. And um, the difference between 383 and 248 on an ongoing basis to me is absolutely worth the $9,000, plus the other toys and goodies that you get for that. Driving feel, driving dynamics, it's an EV, so all that torque is available right away for you. Uh, it's pretty good in normal mode and then you bump it up to sport mode and it's just It's the exclamation mark on the EV driving experience. It's just it's so fast so quick So responsive active safety and this is where Kia's got it incredibly down pat and well done Both the premium and limited trim come with your blind spot monitoring lane departure warning lane keep assist rear cross traffic alert uh, adaptive cruise control and the uh, the forward collision alert so everybody gets that everybody gets the 10.25 uh, inch and 10.25 inch screen uh, everyone gets apple carplay and android auto and a heated steering wheel and heated front seats so with the dc fast charge in an hour's worth of charge kia says you can replenish 80 percent of the battery pretty good because that makes road trips a little more realistic uh, as opposed to um, having to wait several hours. So let's go with the level one charger for the smaller battery, which is the premium, it takes about 36 hours. And for the limited, which is the bigger battery, it takes about 59 hours. And that's just plugging it in at home, level one charger. Level two, here's where the big differences are. So six hours and 10 minutes is what it'll take for the base model and that's the smaller battery. And for the bigger battery, you're looking around nine hours, 35 minutes, according to Kia, to go full charge. Again, that's level two. And again, with the DC fast charge, if you wanna get the entire battery juiced up to 100%, it's about 57 minutes for the base trim, which is the premium. And it's about 75 minutes for the top trim. It makes longer term travel more realistic because it's range anxiety and it's still there and the unfortunate part at least about ontario as of today is ev technology is relatively new and there's just not enough infrastructure available right now in the middle of april 2020 um, to support the evs as far as massive sales numbers go you fix that and ev sales will keep climbing I think with or without the $5,000 rebate. Another thing I really like about the Soul is the seats are incredibly comfortable. I love Kia's infotainment system. Big 10.25 inch screen gets you all sorts of stuff. Uh, navigation comes standard. Pretty, uh, pretty not that bad, Kia. Um, and it just, it feels like an everyday car. And I touched on this during the beginning of the interior portion of the video. But Kia's just done such a, smart and forward-thinking job of creating the soul to be like a gasoline car your everyday car um, you know it just got all the luxuries of what you'd expect a regular car to have um, you know from the heated seats cool seats uh, to a sunroof to the navigation to the car play to all of the active safety features um, I think he has done a terrific job in making it a livable car, a day-to-day -day car, and something that you shouldn't be 
weary of driving just because there is um, there's uh, there's a finite range on it and yes there's a finite range on gasoline cars as well but there are more gas stations than there are EV stations uh, at least as of right now I don't know if we'll ever get to that point where we'll go one for one as far as matching charging stations to gas stations. So $9,000 price difference as of today, middle of April, uh, $42,595 for the premium, $51,595 for the top trim limited. So here's what you're getting for $9,000. About an extra 150 kilometers of range, not too bad. Rain sensing wipers, leather seats, power passenger seat, cooled front seats, heated rear seats, uh, piano black trim. I don't care for that. It catches fingerprints. It looks funny. Um, satin chrome inside door handles. Whatever. Doesn't matter to me. Um, and this is another big one for me. EV range enhancing climate control. So basically that's what I touched on in the interior portion. You hit driver only and that way the heat's concentrated on the driver as opposed to being around the rest of the cabin. Saves you uh, from consumption and when you save from consumption, you get more range. Harman Kardon audio Check mark for me. I, I love my audio. I love my music. I want it to be kind of front and center. Uh, heads up display. Not bad. It's cool that you can change it from green to orange to white as far as colors. And it's awesome that you just touch one button and the whole thing just falls into itself. LED interior lights. Eh, not that big of a deal. Ambient mood lighting. Kind of cool. I'd, uh, I'd, I'd check that off as a, as a benefit for me. Um, and the sunroof. Here's the interesting thing. The one thing you do not get is a heated windshield. So a little peculiar there as far as why the base trim gets it and the top trim limited does not. You can absolutely do one pedal driving in the Soul EV. You got your paddle shifters. So to increase your level of regen braking, you tap on your left paddle, which is we'll call it the downshift. And to go from level three to two to one to level zero, you just tap the right one, uh, sorry, right paddle shifter. And it's absolutely doable. And I think it's cool that you can do one pedal driving. And if you plan your route out and you look ahead and you see what's coming up, um, you could probably get away with one pedal driving for the majority of your driving experiences in the Soul EV. Now, having said that, if you're on the highway or if you're driving along and someone cuts in front of you, please use your brake pedal. But if you're just kind of coasting and doing your thing and uh, you're looking ahead and making sure there's lots of space between you and the car in front of you, you can absolutely nail down one pedal driving by simply using your paddle shifters. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know if you have any questions on the Soul EV in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Be safe, be well, be healthy, and I'll be back sooner than later with my next review.